Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we're going to do the naming of carboxylic acids and esters. So remember carboxylic acids are those that have the carbon double bond oxygen together with an OH. Now carboxylic acids will always have this happening on the very side or at the very end of the carbon chain. So once again you don't have to show the position of the carboxylic acid part. So it's very easy. We just look at how many carbons there are. So that's three. So that's a uh, prop. And then for these ones we're also going to add the AN. And then because it's a carboxylic acid you're going to add the word uic acid. So it's propanuic acid. And that's it. There's no needing to show where the the, this part happens because it's always at the end. So you're not going to say propan 1 uic acid. You're never going to see that. And so that's how you do it. You just got to remember uic acid. And the acid part's easy because we are busy looking at carboxylic acids. Esters are examined quite a lot in exams and their naming can be quite technical. So pay attention. We need to look at how an ester is actually formed and we're going to go over this in detail in future videos but for now you need to know that an ester is a combination of an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid. That's very important so if you throw an alcohol and a carboxylic acid together you get an ester. So what you need to do is be able to identify which part is the alcohol and which part is the carboxylic acid. So this part here on the left of this oxygen is the carboxylic acid. We can see there's that carboxylic acid over there and I'm going to explain this in detail just now. Then the part on the right of the oxygen, well including the oxygen actually, that's the alcohol part. Okay, so well, the way it's going to work is the following. We look at the alcohol part first, that's got three carbons, so that's going to be prop and then we look at the carboxylic acid part which is two carbons and that's going to be eth. Now to complete the name we say propyl and then we leave a space, some teachers don't, that's up to you, and then we can say ethanoate. That is how you name esters, propyl ethanoate. Now let me show you exactly how this molecule formed. So pay attention carefully here guys, so what we have is a carboxylic acid on the left plus a plus an alcohol and those two together are going to give us the ester at the bottom. So let me show you exactly what happens. What happens is that this OH part of the carboxylic acid reacts with this H of the alcohol and so together those two are going to form H2O. So now we can imagine that this part is no longer there and neither is this part over here. What then happens is that this oxygen bonds with this over here and that is the molecule that we form. So can you see it? We've got the carbon and the carbon over here which is this carbon and this carbon. Then there's a bond that goes all the way across to the oxygen of the alcohol and then the carbon, carbon, carbon. So the carbon, carbon, carbon. That is how the ester forms. Now sometimes students can't remember whether it's this OH that goes or this OH that goes. My advice to you is to remember the following. After you have eliminated the water molecule, each half should still have one oxygen. So for example, if I took the H here and I took the OH here, then how many oxygens does this molecule still have? Well, it would have one, two. How many oxygens would this one have? Well, there's none. And so that's not how it works. What we said was that after you have eliminated the water, there should be one oxygen left over for each one. And so what actually happens is that this OH goes and this H. Because now if we look to the left, there is only one oxygen left. And if we look to the right, there's only one oxygen. So that's the way it works. It's the carboxylic acid that loses the OH. And it's also very easy. So here we've got another ester which has a random oxygen in the middle. Well clearly this is the cutoff point and this part here is the original carboxylic acid. Why? Because a carboxylic acid has a C double bond oxygen. And then this part here is the original alcohol. So you name the alcohol part first and so that's got one carbon so that's meth. Then you leave a bit of a space and you name the carboxylic acid which is two carbons so that's eth. Then you just remember to add YL and then ethanoate. 
that's always going to be added, eth the anoate part over there. So here's another ester one. Now remember the C double bond oxygen, well that belongs to the carboxylic acid. See it's actually quite easy. And then this part was from the original alcohol. So you look at the alcohol first, which is 1, 2, so that's eth. Then you look at the carboxylic acid part, which is 3, so that's prop. And then all you do is you add YL and then propanoate, like that. Now here's a single carboxylic acid again, it's not an ester this time, and so it's got a two carbon, so that's ethan, and then remember for carboxylic acid, it's uic acid, so it's ethanoic acid. Here's another ester, I mean not an ester, a carboxylic acid, because it's got the C double bond oxygen, and so that's propan, because it's three, and then uic acid, like that. Okay guys, so that's it. We have now, through the last couple of lessons, we've looked at the naming of all of the types of molecules. In the next couple of lessons, we're just going to practice a bit, and then after that, we're going to start adding in a few more extras, such as branches, and we're going to look at situations where we add more than one kind of attachment, and it's going to get a bit more interesting. But if you're fine up till now, then you're all good.